you a random question. Have you ever seen the Marvel movie Black Panther? Yes. Yes, you have? If so, you'll probably agree with me that the baddest person in the movie is Okoye. She is one of Wakanda's greatest female warriors who protects Black Panther is absolutely intriguing. She's full of grit. She's powerful, wise, skillful, fierce, athletic, graceful, beautiful, confident, and fearless. And whenever I feel like the stakes are high and the chips are down, I immediately think of her and activate her warrior-like persona. I pull out my imaginary sword and I just start slaying it. Killing it, dominating, and nailing it. Every single challenge, adversity, struggle, and obstacle within my control to my desired success. I learned to understand the power of building and maintaining a positive and strategic mindset. So I'm going to channel Okoye's warrior-like persona so I can slay this message that I prepared for you all today. Welcome to the Slay to Success experience. My name is Rochelle Slay Queen Hemingway, and I am the founder and CEO of Slay to Success a leadership and transformational consultant service business. From the time I was 14 and integrated in the high school across the other side of the tracks in a small town called Kokomo, Indiana, I benefited from my family's unwavering support and the strict home training that they provided. That grounding and spiritual foundation of my dad Air Force retired Master Sergeant Fred the King, and my mom, Professor Deborah King, served me well, enabling me to serve and lead for 30 years in the United States Air Force, breaking glass ceilings and impenetrable barriers. I spent three decades learning, growing, and failing. Was it worth it? Absolutely. I'm proud that I was able to wear the cloth of freedom, serve at 10 different military bases in the states and overseas, deployed five different times, led multiple teams, and reached the highest enlisted grade in the highest enlisted position on a military base. After I retired, I wanted to find another sense of purpose. So I started to dream and dabble and at the age of 50, I decided to start a business from scratch, write and self-publish a book about my military career experiences, get my master's degree in strategic leadership, and attain an image consultant certification. There is no one guidebook, a plan, or process to a successful career or life, but my hope is to offer insight and support to all of you because it's not lost on me to know some of us may not always have access to coaches, to mentors, or people that will support us. So with all this being said, I have two questions for you. Are you ready to say no to mediocrity? Are you ready to be the vision that you want to see for yourself? It's time to stop playing small and stifling on our blessings. Today, I wanna to share with you how to become the X Factor by outlining four secrets to leveling up and empowering yourself to slay to your success. So you wanna know what this slay thing is all about? Well, in 2018, I was serving as the medical group superintendent at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. A few days before I departed, on my fifth and last six-month deployment, I received some very bad news. One of my younger airmen unexpectedly passed away. 
Senior Airman Kenyon Brooks lost his battles with depression. He brought so much joy to our lives, and unfortunately, he lost hope for himself. He was a black gay airman who just wanted to be himself. I was one of the people who understood him and we connected right away. I was devastated and I left for that six month deployment very heartbroken. And while I was in the countries of Jordan and Syria, I used the time to develop a way to pay homage to his life, to heal myself and the people in our organization. His favorite word, was slay. So I took the word and started using it on all of the emails. I sent I, as close remarks to staff meetings and to offer praise for achievements. The word again means to kill it, to dominate it, and to nail it. To impress greatly and to be on point. To dream big and work hard until you own it. But I also converted it into an acronym that speaks to life and leadership philosophies that can help you stay on course in your leadership journey. The letter S stands for stay ready to be ready. The letter L stands for lead out loud. The letter A stands for a sense of family, a sense of community. And the letter Y stands for you are built to last. We've all heard that it's better to be prepared for an opportunity than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. So to stay ready, most of us are succeeding today because of the strong work ethic our families have instilled in us, stemming from our values, pride, and a desire to prove ourselves to be as good as or better than anyone else. Because we hold these beliefs to be true as well, the pressure we sometimes put on ourselves never lets up. However, being a workaholic can backfire. So we need to occasionally take a knee. When an athlete is pulled out temporarily, their coach will tell them, hey, take a knee. Taking a knee doesn't mean tapping out of the game. It just means to take a break because something may be off. So when one of my supervisors pulled me in their office and told me to take a knee because they saw I was off at work, I got a little defensive, as most of us do. I thought I was handling everything okay and juggling all the balls in the air. So what did they see? That night, as I was getting our son to bed, I started crying because my supervisor was right. I was struggling. At the time, I was in a high stressful job and wasn't managing stress very well. I was exhausted because our son was less than a year old and he wasn't sleeping through the night. I was constantly bloated and I was feeling burnt out. We were also trying to sell our house because we got reassigned to a new base and it was during the time where the housing market was taking a dive. And my husband, retired doctor, Dominique Hemingway just returned from a dangerous deployment in Afghanistan. I took what my supervisor, supervisor said to heart and I started writing out how I could show up differently and get back into the game of life with a new vision that would create a more balanced, purpose-driven life. So I Googled wellness and I found this picture that spoke on the eight dimensions of wellness. Now, in the military, they show us four, right? Physical, emotional, spiritual, and social. Well, I beg to offer there are eight. These areas are including intellectual, occupational, environmental, and financial wellness. Now, wellness is an intentional, active process of trying to improve our quality of life. Each of these wellness dimensions need attention to find personal harmony. So, as I'm walking through this, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Physical wellness. That includes exercise, sleep habits, 
nutrition, and listening to your body when it's trying to tell you something. Emotional wellness is the ability to successfully handle life stresses and adapt to change in difficult situations, to accept our emotions and work through these emotions in a positive and healthy way. Spiritual wellness is being connected to something bigger or greater than yourself and the search of purpose in your life. It also includes having a good handle on our own set of values, our principles, morals, and beliefs to guide our actions and discussions. Spiritual wellness gives us resiliency to survive with grace and inner peace in the face of adversity. Social wellness is having positive relationships and support systems and stepping out of our comfort, comfort zone and meeting new people. Intellectual wellness is about being a continuous learner and engaging in creative activities that stimulate our minds from a personal and professional perspective. Passions, hobbies, interests leads to a far greater feeling of well-being. Occupational wellness is finding joy, purpose, and satisfaction in your J-O-B. Every, every one of us has a value and unique set of skills and experiences that should be shared for the benefit of all. Environmental wellness is the ability to connect with the world around us and living a life of accountability as well as understanding consequences and in the effects of the people around us. And lastly, financial wellness is about managing expenses, understanding loan structures, and having an appreciation of our financial standing. So rate yourself. I'm gonna pause here because many a time people come to me about their wellness and they don't stop to think about where they're at. The better you are, you show up in the better version of yourself so that others can benefit. So we need to continuously improve our overall being. L stands for lead out loud. One of the best ways we can build our strength is to lead out loud and to know our value. Don't confuse our net worth with our self-worth. Our net worth is determined by our assets and resources. Our self-worth is determined by our level of self-confidence and the value we have to offer. When it comes to our organizations, our teams, knowing our self-worth is important. For more than half of my military career, I wasn't paying attention to my accomplishments. I was taking myself for granted because I knew how to do my J.O.B. I was a medical technician, and I was trained to go out in remote areas and provide emergency medical care to the teams I was deployed with, but I lost sight of the skill sets I was bringing because I wasn't looking at the fact that I was literally saving lives. We should write down our accomplishments and continue to do so on a regular basis. We manage projects, we're managing people, building teams, overseeing committees, balancing budgets, and workloads at work. And we may also be church leaders, volunteer hospital workers, community organizers, or sorority leaders. So don't be afraid to stand tall and stick out your chest. You are worth more than your weight in gold. And your self-worth as a leader is more important than your net worth. It takes a variety of leadership styles to be successful. There is no one way to manage a team. However, to learn that style, we will work best for you in a given situation. It takes knowing yourself as well as the individuals you are working with. Different situations require different styles of management. As I was climbing up the promotion ladder, I saw that just having one style was not working. I was barking orders and telling people how to get things done without getting their input. It was not good. And it led to some of the people I was leading to have resentment towards me. 
I had to learn other leadership styles and mix it up. There are a lot of leadership styles out here, all right? Transformational, y'all heard them. Servant, transactional, bureaucratic, delegative, participative, situational, and charismatic. There is no right way to lead that suits all situations that we will encounter. We just need to understand them, how they impact others, and when to use them. The one type of leadership style I learned after the onset of the pandemic was sapient leadership. As I was helping to make decisions to the readiness, health, and welfare of over 8,000 people while I was serving as the Command Chief Master Sergeant at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota, the days of just being smart to get to the top was over. For the past few years, leaders are being challenged to lead with wisdom, intelligence, and insight. So you need to be fully present in the moment and open to learning growth opportunities. Understand and relate to others' experiences, emotions, and perspectives. Have the ability to analyze and synthesize information to make informed decisions. Make thoughtful and reasoned decisions based on analysis. As leaders, we should strive to be adaptable and flexible using the right style of leadership for each situation we encounter so we can lead out loud. A stands for a sense of family and sense of community. Now this may sound crazy, but one of the prerequisites for becoming a good leader is you gotta like people. We cannot be truly effective leaders, the kind that people wanna follow, unless we care about others. We have to have their best interests in mind and understand how they think and feel. If our relational skills are weak, our leadership will always suffer. To create a sense of family, a sense of community, we must do the following. You gotta bring good energy. All of us are going through something, coming out of something, or getting ready to go into something. So one of the most simplest things we can do is to smile at people. Whether they are senior executives, receptionists, or work in the mailroom. Next, we can show interest in all types of people, share common ground and experiences, include them, but don't tell them all your business. By the way, I let people know about 85% of what's going on in my life. The other 15%, you are never going to know about them, all right? So we need to be able to challenge ourselves to expand our circle of colleagues, our friends and families. We have to represent, influence, problem solve, communicate in general, connect with people in many ways on many different levels because in so many cases, it's not what we know, but who we know. Why stands for you are built to last? As we're building generational wealth and legacy, we can't be defeated by the madness. Never, never, never stop believing in yourself. Just don't do it. When someone criticizes you or your work, try not to take it personally and look for the method of useful feedback that we may actually want to use to improve our performance. We all know what it's like when nothing seems to be going as we planned, and we begin to question how we got to a particular situation. When one of my supervisors, again, I was at Airman, y'all, I was at NCO, one of my supervisors told me that they didn't trust me, all I could see was red. At the time, I was recently promoted to Chief Master Sergeant because I was doing all the right things. They were intimidated by my ability to create influence and power. It was a ploy to give my power away because they knew it would affect my mood, frustrate and anger me, which at first was working until I realized it really didn't have anything to do with me. We may be tempted to read someone the right act, pack up our things and walk out. My recommendation is to impose a 24 hour rule and to not take immediate action. 
no matter how difficult this may seem. As much as I wanted to flip tables over and kick doors down, I didn't want to say something or do something that I would regret later. This situation resolved on itself. Winning the battle is not worth losing the war. We must find everything we can about our rights and then decide what to do. If the situation might be improved by our speaking out, then we must resolve to do so. If, on the other hand, it is clear that we are not protected and the managers of the company have no interest in doing the right thing, then it may be better for us to pick up our marbles and go home and wait for the next opportunity. We must learn to maintain our integrity and keep our dignity whatever we decide to do. You are built to last. Slaying to your success is all about staying ready to be ready, lead out loud, a sense of community, a sense of family, and you're built to last. Keeping our confidence intact and realizing that outer forces have nothing to do with our inner spirit or our resilience. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors who sacrificed mightily so that we can have the privileges and opportunities we take for granted today. Through them, we know and affirm that we are amazing people. And with confidence in ourselves, we can do anything we set our mind to. So as I step off into here, my hope is my message helped you to discover or reignite your X factor, like a Koye embodies, unveil what is holding you back and formulate your own bold steps to change the game. Thank you.